Well, if I know you're, you know, got so many things going on and you'll have plenty of time to really reflect, but just kind of going into this, did the pandemic um, cause you to adjust a little or did you just go ahead and say, you know what, like you said, we, there's still going to be yeah. an opportunity. No, it really didn't. Uh, you know, we obviously, we've been thinking about this, praying about this for a very long time. Uh, well, really about 23 years, you know, I was, uh, I was kind of ready. I was kind of ready for this almost as soon as I got started at Washington. Uh, and so uh, this has been a long time uh, coming. And I have felt for a long time that I, um, I didn't want to wait too long, uh, you know, for leaders who have served uh, uh, for, with institutions for, for many years. Uh, we're always conscious uh, of wanting to leave a little bit before it's actually time, uh, rather than waiting too long. And so that's always been a part of our consideration. And then when uh, in over the summer, as then I engaged Bill Stevens in conversation about this, and I began to fully understand that it's not in any way the end of my relationship with Sanford. It just enters into a different phase. And I'll be completely out of the way of the new president, but still playing a supporting role and, uh, and a cheerleader for Sanford. Uh, as I fully began to understand that it would, could work that way, then all the rest of the pieces fell into shape. And as friends have told me who have uh, retired, uh, so many have said, you know, when, when you really get to that point, you're going to be surprised uh, how you have the complete sense of peace about it. Wow. And exactly what has happened. Uh, so everything has fallen into, into place uh, beautifully. And uh, so, no, uh, COVID-19 made us question a little bit, uh, but not, not to the extent that it pulled us seriously off track. Mm -hmm. You know, and I love that concept that you'll be able to stay part of the Sanford community and in a different role. Do you see that as something that leaders uh, should consider um, instead of just, you know, retiring and moving on and you never see them again, that yeah. find that fine line where you're not, you're not hanging out in the president's office necessarily, but yeah. you have this other yeah. role that you can use, pull from all your experience and all your connections. Yeah, that has been hard for me to work through because we talked about this before. You know, when when I was considerably younger and, and left the Washington presidency, uh, I only knew one way to do it, and that was to just to just get out of town and uh, and and essentially be completely out of mind. Right. And uh, I did that, I think, for good reasons. But you know, I probably botched that. Uh, I probably could have could have uh, even um, with coming to Sanford played a little bit more of a supportive cheerleader kind of role for Washita, uh, but I didn't know how to do that. And, um, and so now with a little bit more maturity, uh, I understand that uh, a leader that has accumulated some, uh, some elements of goodwill and, uh, and, and human capital uh, over the years, relationship capital, uh, that uh, if you care about stewardship, you don't want to waste that. Uh, and so whatever I can do uh, in, in, in the time that I have left on the planet uh, to be able to, um, to, to use that for Sanford's advancement, mm -hmm. then I have to do it. Uh, you know, Gina and I came here with a with with what we knew would become a lifelong commitment to Sanford, and so that's not going to stop now. But uh, I do understand how to be a past president, and uh, I will play that role. I think uh, in ways that will that will serve the incoming president well. I will stay out of his or her way, uh, be available whenever needed, but I won't be needed very much for that role. President will have plenty to do, and and uh, we'll get things underway quickly next summer. You already have a, a little list of things that you're going to tell the new president. You know, since <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you've you've uh, you, you've you've heard my joke about the three envelopes. You ever hear that? I don't think I've heard that one. 
Yeah, well, you know, the you have a presidential transition and uh, the, uh, you know, the old president on the way out of the office says to the new president, you know, I left you three envelopes in the top left hand desk drawer uh, for three for the three crises you will face. And so, uh, you know, just just open them one crisis at a time. <laughs> Six months into the job, you know, the uh, the first crisis comes up. And uh, so the new president pulls out the drawer and takes the envelope out that is marked crisis number one and uh, looks at it and says, um, it says, uh, blame the faculty. And uh, and so the new president does, doesn't work very well, but he manages to go ahead and get beyond uh, of all of that. Uh, and so about a year later, the second crisis emerges. He takes out the second envelope and he opens it and it says, blame the trustees. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, that works not as well as blaming the faculty, but it, but it works. Uh, and so then he goes on for about another year and uh, crisis number three hits. He goes to the drawer, takes out uh, the envelope number three and opens and it says, Prepare three envelopes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, you know? Uh, so yeah, I guess, I guess I'll leave three envelopes uh, in the drawer here. Um, and I will also leave um, the set of keys that Tom Quartz gave me. Uh, you know, um, when, when I came in in 06, uh, they gave me two shiny keys. I mean, brand new keys that they'd made for front door Sanford Hall and for my office. And so I used them that morning early to come in and I got to the desk and on my desk, Tom had left a beautiful handwritten note and his two old keys. So uh, very quickly, I gave my shiny keys back to facilities and I put the old keys on my chain. And uh, so that's what I've used uh, all these years. So I'll turn those over. They're perfectly good keys. No, no need uh, to waste money on preparing new keys. So I'll do that along with a nice note and maybe three envelopes. I love it. Well, I don't think I've seen you use those envelopes during your tenure. <laughs> um, so I, I love that joke. What would you say though, uh, as being all the years you've been college president, both colleges, what would be um, the best memory, the best piece of being a college president, what, what would you take, what will you take home with you as your very best? Well, two things. Uh, uh, one is, uh, I mean, it sounds like a Sunday school answer, but I mean, it, it, it's, it's right. I think for any college president who really enjoys student contact and it is the student contact, uh, you know, um, uh, the students are entirely willing to get to know you and talk with you if you just, you know, stay with them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I have really, I have really enjoyed that. And I've never felt that my student contact was diminished in any way by being president. So that's, that's number one, but, but close behind it is, um, uh, I, I think the thing that I will treasure the most is hiring wonderful people. Uh, wonderful, God-honoring people at both institutions, and then trying to do my best to encourage them to succeed. Uh, but, but those two things, um, uh, really developing the student relationships, and then uh, the, the joy of hiring wonderful people. So well, on the other side of that, what has been the hardest part of being a college president? Well, uh, it's almost always got something to do with money. Uh, and uh, it is, uh, I think, um, especially um, over these last um, uh, 14 years at Sanford, uh, continuing to develop a, a workable business model for, uh, for a university, especially a university that flies under the banner of Christ in the midst of, of constant change. And uh, nothing stays stuck for long uh, in this environment. And so finding that business model and adapting it all the time to make it work financially uh, is, is a continuing challenge. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. I can imagine. Well, you mentioned in your email to the students, I believe, that you were going to be waddling through these <laughs> next yeah. months. By the way, my daughter Riley... Uh, 
she came by just before you called and she brought uh she brought this to me <laughs> yeah yeah we're gonna be waddling for a while fantastic so what does waddling look like for andy westmoreland well uh first uh not first uh at some point uh over the next 10 months I've got to sort through hundreds of thousands of email messages to determine what goes into the Sanford archive from my administration and wow. forward to that. And so that may actually extend a little bit more into retirement so that I can get all of that cleaned up. So if accidentally they all got deleted, oops, I mean, right. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't help that, right? Oh, I mean. How did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, that's right. Uh, so that is, I, I do not look forward to that. Uh, we've got, uh, there's, there's been something that you may not have heard much about. It's called COVID-19. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and it has played havoc with uh, the reopening of, uh, of colleges and universities and keeping them in session uh, with in -person instruction. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, aren't you glad? <laughs> Had this this conversation I've got to do a breaking news story hold on <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, the challenges of doing that and keeping our people as safe as possible and keeping in-person instruction going and keeping everybody healthy in the residence halls and doing all of that uh, at this point until November 24th which is the last day of the of the fall term for uh, for regular classes uh, that is, that's a pretty significant challenge, and I think it may consume a fair amount of my time between now and then. Uh, we are, of course, still engaged in a, in a, a large capital campaign, and uh, we've got uh, a, lot of, um, a lot of money still to raise uh, with that. And uh, whether or not I'll be able to completely wrap that up by June 30, I don't know. I don't mind leaving the new president with a little work to do. <laughs> Uh, but know, don't make it too easy on it you know <laughs> <laughs> there's there's all of that and then um the the other more routine things that you just do uh day in and day out as, as president uh i i've got to um ensure that we end this year in the black and uh that uh that's that's a challenge in the current environment but uh then uh, Gina and I really do want to find the ways uh, over the next 10 months of, uh, of telling these people who have loved us so much, <laughs> despite my flaws, uh, how much we love them and how much we treasure them, and, uh, and a whole lot of people way beyond this campus. Uh, you know, there are those times in your life that... Uh, that the the marker is there and you know um this is the time that that i've got to let people know those things and so i am now entering into that era of my life